hello and welcome. This is an instructional video intended for students who have probably finished their sophomore year, entering their junior year of high school, who want to make sure that they are that they have learned the right things going into their junior year so that they can be successful in the last two years of high school and into their college studies. On this video, algebra, some basic algebra, uh, leading into some factoring. Uh, we won't solve quadratics in this screencast. So by basic algebra, I mean I want students who have finished their sophomore year to be able to multiply binomials together. Now, how do we multiply binomials together? We multiply binomials together by using the distributive property twice. We distribute the x through the parentheses, and then we distribute the 3 through the parentheses. Well, what does that mean? What does it mean to distribute? Well, the x gets distributed through the parentheses. x times 3x, well, 1 times 3 is 3, and x times x is x squared x times 2, that's 2x, and then coming over here, we distribute the minus 3 through parentheses. Negative 3 times 3 is negative 9, uh, 1 times x is x, and then negative 3 times positive 2 is negative 6. We've got some like terms to combine, so that's 3x squared minus 7x minus 6. I'll say a couple of things about algebra. One is that these are not like terms, and so they may not be combined. You can't combine those to get negative 4x to the some ridiculous power. Those cannot combine. There's an x squared term and an x term and a constant term. There's a quadratic term and a linear term and a constant term. This is as simple as it gets. That's as simple as we can do it. That's our final answer. Now, some people have learned an acronym that help us uh, with doing this. Some people have learned as an acronym FOIL. And FOIL, of course, stands for multiply the first thing in each set of brackets together, and then the outermost terms, and then the innermost terms, and then the last terms. And if you do that, then you look at this problem, and you say, okay, how do I do that? x times 3x, there's your 3x squared, outermost terms is positive 2x, innermost terms is negative 9x, there's your negative 7x, and then the lasts. The issue with this is that it doesn't extend well. If you're not multiplying a binomial by a binomial, we don't have a word for you. If you're multiplying a trinomial by a trinomial, we don't have a nine-letter word for you that helps you do that. So really what you want to know is that when I'm multiplying a binomial times a binomial, I distribute and then distribute again. Okay? Okay. So, let's connect this to equation solving. Let's solve x plus 2 over 2x plus 3 equals 3x minus 1 over 6x minus 4. How do we solve proportions? Well, generally speaking, we solve proportions by cross multiplying. And so we would say x plus 2 times 6x minus 4 equals 2x plus 3 times 3x minus 1. We can cross multiply because really what we're doing is we're multiplying on both sides by the common denominator. Whoa! We multiply on both sides by the common denominator. That's what we do.
and then the 2x plus 3s cancel, and the 6x minus 4s cancel, and you get this thing that we can see. Okay, so then it's distribution on both sides. So we'll distribute the x first, and then the 2, distribute the 2x first, and then the 3. So this is 6x squared, this is a minus 4x, this is a plus 12x, that's a minus, oh, and that's a minus 8. This is a 6x squared. Uh, this is a minus 2x, this is a plus 9x, and then that's a minus 3. So notice what happens, the 6x's drop out, and now I've got a nice linear equation to solve. So let's subtract 7x and add 8 on both sides. Those go away, nope, those go away. So 8x minus 7x is x, those go away, negative 3 plus 8 is 5, and we're done. You should come to class, yes, you should come to class, and we meet next time, ready to talk about 3x minus 2 over 6x minus 5 equals x over... 2x minus 1. This is a question you should come to class knowing how to do. So there. Uh, hey, one other thing for us to consider. One other thing for us to consider. So this will be question 1 for you to consider. Here's question 2 to consider. If I were to take 2 plus radical 3, and square it. 2 plus radical 3 squared is some number plus some other number times radical 3. I would like for you to find P and Q. Those are things that I think you should be able to do between now and the time we gather. Um, okay, so if you can multiply and you can think backwards, you can think about factoring. And if you're going to think about factoring, well, the, the way we always start factoring is we have some common factor that we pull out. So let's imagine 3x cubed plus 9x squared plus 6x. Let's imagine that we're factoring. Uh, if I want to factor something, I want to break it up into two quantities whose product, well, I want to break it up into two or more quantities, whose product is this thing up here. So in this particular case, the first thing we're going to try to look for is the first thing we always try to look for. We try to look for the greatest common factor, the greatest common factor, the greatest monomial that divides each of these terms. So 3, 9, and 6 have a common factor of 3. That's x cubed, that's x squared, that's x. So the greatest common factor is the lowest power of x that we see, and that's x to the first. So what ends up happening is we write that 3x in one of the sets of parentheses, one of the brackets. So what goes in the other set of parentheses? Well, we want 3x times something to equal 3x cubed. Well, what's that something? Well, 3 times 1 is 3. x times what is x cubed? Well, that's x squared. And then we want 3x times something to equal 9x squared. Well, what's that something? Well, that something, oh, that something, 3 times 3 is 9, x times x is x squared, 
and then 3x times something is going to be 6x. Well, 3 times 2 is 6, and x times 1 is x. We don't need to write that. And then you're thinking to yourself, self, doesn't that break down further? And the answer is yes, it does break down further. This factor is as good as it's going to be. But this one breaks down by a sort of quote-unquote reverse foil in such a way that I have a binomial here and a binomial here whose product is this. Now, how do I know that these are both plus signs? Because this is the product of the last two numbers of this term and this term. So these have to be the same sign to end up with something positive. And they're going to add to something positive because this is going to be the result of this product and that one. So I reverse engineer. I know that I've got to have an x squared, so there's going to be an x here and an x there. And I know I need numbers in this spot and this spot that multiply to 2, because they're going to multiply to 2, and add to 3, because they're going to add to 3. So I pick 2 and 1, and I'm done. I can factor a quadratic in that way. And I am sure if you have made your junior year of high school that you have done problems where they have asked you to factor uh, x squared minus 7x plus 10 or x squared minus 7x minus 30. And so these are two questions that you should come to class knowing how to do. You should come to class knowing how to do them. I'll let you think about how to get numbers that multiply to 10 but add to negative 7 or multiply to negative 30 and add to negative 7. Those are things that you should be thinking about in the privacy of your own home. Sometimes the factoring gets more difficult. Sometimes you get a leading coefficient that isn't 1. You get like a 6x squared plus a 5x plus 1. And you're trying to factor. And you're thinking, how does this go? Because maybe this 6x squared is a 6x and a 1x. And maybe this 6x squared is a 3x and a 2x. And we just don't know what it is. So it would be nice if we had some way to reverse engineer this problem. And it turns out that we do. Over here in Scrapland, I'm going to multiply the so-called a and c coefficients and get 6. Now what I'm looking for are factor pairs of 6, numbers that multiply to 6. And I figure out 6 and 1 work, 1 and 6 work, but 1 and 6 is really 6 and 1, 3 and 2 work, negative 6 and negative 1 work, and negative 3 and negative 2 work. Those are the factor pairs of 6. So I take these factor pairs and I find the factor pair where the numbers add to that. And I'm thinking, no, no, yes. And then we do a very curious thing that someone I know called split the middle. When we split the middle, we leave the 6x squared by itself, we leave the plus 1 by itself, and we rewrite this middle term using those coefficients. Why? Oh, why on earth would we do that? Well, good question. Let's take the greatest common factor out of here, and then let's take the greatest common factor out of there. Greatest common factor out of here is a 3x. What's left inside the parentheses? 3 times 2 is 6. x times x is x squared. Oh, that's a 1. And then greatest common factor here, wait a second, 
greatest common factor there is one. And then I think to myself, self, this factor is common to both of these terms. It can be removed. We can factor out a 2x plus 1. And what's left inside? If I remove the 2x plus 1 from this term, what's left is 3x. And if I remove the 2x plus 1 from this term, that's a plus 1. And so I now know that 6x squared plus 5x plus 1 factors in this way. Now you say, I could have gotten that by guess and check. Well, I agree that you could have gotten that by guess and check. However, if the numbers get more complicated, if you end up factoring something like, oh, I don't know, 12x squared minus 7, no, 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 too easy. Too easy. What if you have to factor something like 3x squared minus Nope. You're thinking, this guy hasn't planned. 9x squared minus 6x minus 8. What if you have to factor something like that? Where, okay, I'll guess and check, but this 9 could be a 3 and a 3, or it could be a 9 and a 1, and this 8 could be 8 and 1, or 4 and 2, or 8 and 1, or 1 and 8, or 4 and 2, or 2 and 4. That's a lot of guessing and checking. So instead of guessing and checking, let's use this process where 9 times negative 8 is negative 72, and we list out the factor pairs of 72 until we find a factor pair of 72 where the factors add to negative 6. And I'll let you finish that job and be ready with that in class next time. OK? OK. So that is a quick look at factoring, where we split the middle. So you can, you can factor any factorable trinomial in this way. Uh, factoring where the lead coefficient is 1. Factoring where the greatest common factor. Uh, so that's a lot of stuff for you to be able to do when we gather next time. When we gather, I will have some questions that should hopefully deepen your understanding, and we'll talk about that when we see each other.